this while we have been talking about the Indian textile industry with regard to the colonial rule in the subcontinent. In our last lessons we learned about how the East India companies actually promoted the sale of Indian textiles in the international markets but subsequently these Indian textiles fell out of importance in the international markets. And after that we also discussed about the cotton mills that came into being to compete with the British produced cotton textiles. Having talked about the textile industry all this while, let us now focus on the iron and steel industry. In this lesson we will be focusing on the colonial rule and iron smelters in India. We will learn about how iron was being used in the Indian subcontinent during the colonial rule and the importance it had in the subcontinent. Now what you see on the screen is Tipu Sultan's famous word. Tipu Sultan was the ruler of Mysore till 1799 when he lost his life in the Anglo-Mysore war. He was a very brave and valiant ruler and he fought single-handedly against the Britishers to protect his territory. But why are we suddenly talking about Tipu Sultan you must be wondering? Well, it is because of his sword. But why is his sword of any importance in our discussion? This is because Tipu Sultan's sword was made of wood still. Now this sword was so powerful that it could rip through the opponent's armor. So from this you can understand how strong and sharp this sword is. Now this sword was made of a particular kind of steel that is known as wood steel. Woods is a kind of high carbon steel and woods was used for the production of arms like swords and other weapons. Now in this wood steel we can see that there is a flowing water like pattern. Now this water like pattern was because of the presence of carbon elements in iron and this wood steel sword was so powerful that Tipu Sultan used it even till the last moment of his life. In fact when Tipu Sultan died he had his sword clutched in his hands. Now his sword is a part of a collection in the British Museum. It is in the British Museum that one can find the Tipu Sultan sword. But what is of importance in our discussion is that it was made of wood steel which is a particular kind of high carbon steel that was produced in the Indian subcontinent. Now I am sure many of you might be wondering about the terminology of the word woods. Well woods is an anglicized version of the Kannada word ukku, Telugu word hukku and the Tamil and Malayalam word Urukku. Now all these words mean the same. These mean still. So wood still is a particular kind of high carbon still as we just mentioned which was produced in the Indian subcontinent through many centuries. Before proceeding with this lesson let me ask you a question. What is the meaning of the word woods? Does it mean steel, iron, bronze or copper? Well, the correct answer is still. The word woods is an anglicized version of several Tamil, Kannada, Telugu words which all mean still. Now, the British colonial officer Francis Buchanan left an account of the technique of production of wood still and it was produced through a process of smelting. Now wood smelting used to happen in Mysore at this point of time. Now what do we understand by the process of smelting? Well smelting is a process in which any kind of metal is obtained by heating its ore or soil to a very high temperature. Smelting is also the process in which any metal item 
is heated in order to melt it and use the metal for the production of new items and it is through the process of smelting of iron ore that wood still was obtained and this melting used to happen in Mysore. So can you understand how Tipu Sultan who was the ruler of Mysore used to use this wood still sword that was so strong and powerful that it could cut through the opponent's armor as well. Now let us look at the production of this. Iron ore is mixed with charcoal and then filled in clay pots and then by alteration of temperatures the smelter actually beats the iron ingots and in this way this kind of still is produced. I am sure you will be surprised to know that the production of wood still was so fascinating and its properties were also so interesting that the legendary scientist and the discoverer of electricity and electromagnetism Michael Faraday actually spent four long years from 1818 to 1822 to study the properties of Indian woods. So from this we can understand that the Indian woods was important not just in the country. In fact it attracted the attention of scientists as well. But a very unfortunate thing that happened in this regard is that the wood still making process was completely lost by the mid 19th century. So the wood still that actually helped the production of such strong weapons and was also very interesting in terms of its properties was completely lost by the mid 19th century. But what do you think were the reasons behind this? The first and foremost reason would be that the sword and armor making industry died with the conquest of India by the British. Now when the Britishers came to rule the Indian subcontinent, the rulers were subordinated to them. The rulers had to acknowledge and accept the suzerainty of the British crown. So the rulers were no longer independent and autonomous and they were no longer fighting wars amongst themselves. Which is why this entire sword and armor making industry that has been important in the subcontinent since many decades now fail out of importance. And then imports of iron and steel from England displaced the iron and steel produced by craftspersons in India. Now the 19th century was the time of technological inventions thanks to the industrial revolution that happened in England. And because of the industrial revolution many new kinds of technological advancements were happening not just in England but throughout Europe. Many industries were coming to being and iron and steel industry gained great importance in England. And from this point of time iron and steel was being imported from England. And what happened because of this? Because of this, this iron and steel that was produced by the craftspersons in India was displaced by the imports of iron and steel from England. So these were the two primary reasons why the production of wood steel now lost its importance by the mid 19th century. All this while we have been talking about a particular kind of still that is the wood still. But along with wood still, different kinds of still are obtained at several parts of the Indian subcontinent. And this very process of iron smelting in India was extremely common till the end of the 19th century. So iron smelting used to happen in several parts of the subcontinent and it used to happen because of the production of implements and tools of daily use. Now the people of Bihar and central India used to carry out this process of iron smelting and they used to do so in order to manufacture implements and tools which were used for their daily purposes. Now in iron smelting this work was mainly carried out by the men. The furnaces were mostly made of clay or bricks 
and women used to actually fan the charcoal so as to have the charcoal burning for many hours and men used to carry out this process of iron smelting in order to produce implements and tools which they used regularly. Now at this point of time that is by the late 19th century the demand of iron produced by local smelters declined. So we can understand how the colonial rule was actually affecting the use and the demand of Indian iron and steel. Why was it so? Because imported British steel was used by Indian iron smiths to manufacture utensils and implements. Now this imported British steel at this point of time was cheaper than the ones that were produced by the Indian craftspersons. The Indian craftspersons used to do all the work manually which was why it was more extensive, laborious and expensive as well. But because of the industrial revolution, it was easier for England to produce huge bulks of iron and steel, which were then exported to the Indian subcontinent. And the Indian iron smiths used to use this British steel. And in this way, the use of Indian iron and steel actually declined around this point of time. Along with this, there was another huge issue that happened because of the imposition of forest laws. Now, the forest laws were implemented by the Britishers. Why was it done? The forest laws were implemented by the Britishers in order to restrict the Indian masses from entering the forests. The Britishers believed that the Indian masses were actually destroying the timber, the valuable timber that they required for the production of different kinds of furniture and other things. And so these forest laws actually restricted the entry of indigenous people in the forests. Now if people could not enter the forests, how would they get charcoal for iron smelting? It became increasingly difficult for them to make their furnaces work. Which is why this process of iron smelting now started fading out of importance by the mid 19th century. Because by this point of time, the forest laws were being implemented by the British colonial rule in the Indian subcontinent. Now, what do you think happened to the craftspersons who were associated with this process of iron smelting? They had to feed themselves. Now, if one occupation does not provide a person with the money or the resources that that person requires for his or her sustenance, then that person will have to look for alternate ways of livelihood. And likewise, many iron smelters gave up their craft to look for other means of livelihood. Because these people needed to sustain themselves. They could no longer earn their bread by the process of iron smelting because it was no longer very important in the subcontinent. Now in many areas, the government did grant them access to the forested regions. But they had to pay very high taxes to the forest department. So in order to use the furnaces or even to gather charcoal, these poor people had to pay very high taxes to the forest department. So it became difficult for them to pay these high taxes and enter the forests to gather charcoal or even use the furnaces. So for this we can understand why so many iron smelters actually had to give up their craft. They were forced to work as peasants or as artisans or laborers and workers on the farms or in other places. So this brings us to an end of a discussion on the colonial rule and the iron smelters in the Indian subcontinent. Now we began this lesson by talking about the wood still which is a particular kind of high carbon still. We learned about the process of iron smelting as well. In iron smelting, iron ore is mixed with charcoal and then it is filled in clay pots. In the process of iron smelting, the iron smelter actually mixes charcoal with the iron ore. 
and then it is filled in clay pots and by alteration of temperature the smelter gets the iron ingots now this iron ingot was used for the production of wood steel or different kinds of iron and steel weapons we also learnt about how the colonial rule affected the process of iron smelting in the indian subcontinent iron smelting faded out of importance simply because more and more iron and steel were being imported from britain in a subsequent lesson we will be taking up a very interesting line of discussion that is to say we will then learn about how iron and steel industry as a whole became important in the indian subcontinent after this point of time as in after the iron smelting process was slowly fading out of importance from the subcontinent don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it's rewarding too so register for free now